Another Australian airline is now on the brink of going bust. Well, we are concerned about Rex. It's an important regional airline. There has to be an opening up of our air space so that we can have more than just two airlines to choose from. The Prime Minister has acknowledged his concerns about the future of the airline Rex after it paused trading on the stock exchange this week. The airline has also disabled some online bookings. Now, this all comes after budget airline Bonza entered voluntary administration earlier in the year. So, is Australia about to lose its only airline not owned by Virgin or Qantas? In today's Deep Dive, we're going to unpack what the latest news about Rex means and what it says about how the commercial domestic aviation industry is going in Australia. So, Em, earlier this week, we started to hear rumours about Rex. And I just want to put out there, I am such a Rex loyalist. I am so sad to have read headlines that suggest that Rex might be going under. Yep. I'm actually meant to be flying with them tomorrow. <gasps> Don't know what's meant to happen. Oh, dear. Don't know if I should book another flight. But I've got you here to explain everything. So that's okay. <gasps> Starting at the beginning, can you just break down the headlines that people might have been seeing and reading and hearing about Rex? Yep. And I, I back the devotion to Rex. Mm. I think there's probably a lot of people listening who are concerned. Maybe you've pivoted towards Rex because of and frustration. you've been let down by yeah, other players. Because you've been let down by other players and you might have been frustrated with delays, cancellations, etc. We will get to all of that. But Zara, I have to be honest with you up front. It's not looking great. We mm. heard from a range of concerned stakeholders yesterday, including Anthony Albanese, about the future of Rex. And this all started on Monday afternoon. So that's when we found out about an ASX trade pause. That's the Australian Securities Exchange. And Rex is a publicly listed company on the mm-hmm. ASX, it announced a temporary freeze on anyone buying or selling its shares. So that announcement was made ahead of markets opening on Tuesday and was set to last two days, so Tuesday and Wednesday. But before it ends, we're expecting to hear from the airline again about the the future of Rex, and that's when the full scope of its troubles are probably going to become much clearer. Okay, so just to clarify, the first sense that we got that something was wrong with Rex was that they announced a trade pause, which basically just meant no one could buy and sell their shares in Rex at this time. And that was an indication to the market and to Australia that something is up. What? We don't know, but something (laughs) is up. If we zoom out a bit to understand Rex's place in the sector, what does that look like? So for those people who aren't Rex loyalists like us, Rex launched after two regional airlines merged in 2002. Those airlines were called Hazleton and Kendall, and it became a publicly listed company on the ASX three years later. That's quite surprising to me. I thought Rex was a fairly new company. Yes. So it's a firm player in the domestic Mm. aviation space, but it had really carved out this identity around a core belief that, quote, the bush needs and deserves an air service of quality to connect regional communities and bigger cities. Mm -hmm. So Rex's ethos as a carrier had always been about servicing remote and regional parts of Australia. It's operated as this standalone carrier in, you know, really remote parts of the country Mm -hmm. or operating services that other carriers don't. It did expand in the last couple of years. So in June 2020, Rex announced plans for the airline to expand its domestic routes from March 2021. And -hmm. that's when it added a bunch more services, including capital city services. Sydney to Melbourne, for example, is the Rex route that I think you and I have flown on more recently. And that's around the time when, you know, people in the cities started paying more attention to Rex. It really emerged as this reliable player in a post-COVID setting where, as we know, a lot of uh, turbulence, Mm -hmm. for lack of a better word, has bemoaned the industry, Mm -hmm. cancellations, airfare issues, lost baggage, all the rest of it. Rex has kind of emerged as the underdog and the surprise in that market. As I mentioned at the top, it's the only commercial airline here not owned by Qantas or Virgin because Jetstar, the budget airline, is owned by Qantas. And this is a point you're probably going to hear more and more about with the conversation around, you know, market 
competition, dominance, whether or not there is a fair and regulated enough sector at play for Australian consumers. Well, I mean, that does make me think about a conversation that we've already had this year. Like, we've already had this conversation, yep. but it was in regards to another airline. It was in regards to Bonza, which launched fairly recently but has already gone under. This seems to be a conversation that keeps happening. Yeah, if this sort of language is sounding familiar, it's because it is. Rex is not the first casualty of the domestic aviation industry of late. As you mentioned, Bonza went into liquidation. It entered voluntary administration, announced that in April. And for some context about where Bonza came from, it was Australia's first low-cost independent airline to launch here in 15 years when its services began in January 2023. But less than a year after launching, it was never really able to compete with Jetstar and the others, and it cut a bunch of its services within that first year. Then last month confirmed that over 300 employees' contracts were terminated. It had failed to find a buyer to potentially bail out the airline, and we said farewell to Bonza. And now the same could be true of Rex. Has this news come out of the blue? Are people that are, I guess, more keenly watching this sector, have they anticipated based on anything that this could happen to Rex as well as Bonza? Yeah, so sadly there were some warning signs. We know that Rex has been struggling to recover from disruptions caused by the pandemic. And in the 2022-23 financial year, Rex reported $30 million in losses. Some other early signs of trouble came in September last year when Rex cut a bunch of services. It said that they were set to resume in March, but then extended that pause on those services till October. Mm. So Rex hasn't been operating at that full capacity to which it extended in 2021 since September last year. This year, its board has undergone major reshuffles. We saw its executive chairman resign. Several Rex directors have also resigned. And that brings us to this week, when Rex's ASX share price dropped to its lowest value since the start of the pandemic. Mm. So that's really significant. And then on Monday, we, of course, had the announcement of that trade pause that ends today. And what has the response been like to the news? You know, I know that around the newsroom we've had very strong reactions, but what's kind of the political or commercial response to this been? Yeah, we heard from the PM, Anthony Albanese, yesterday. He acknowledged his concerns about the future of Rex during a press conference. Here's a little bit of what he had to say. Rex as a regional airline, of course, provides important links with regional communities, is important for those local economies. So we want to see the aviation industry in Australia continue to be one that provides that service and that access. The other very important part of this is about the workers, the people who work for Rex, who operate and, you know, fly the planes and everything else. Are we expecting job losses? Concern around this exact issue has been floated by the Transport Workers Union. They've been really vocal in the last day or two. Now, that's the union that represents workers in the airline industry, and it said thousands of workers have been thrown into limbo by this uncertainty surrounding Rex. It estimates some 3,000 jobs could be on the line here if Rex can't pull through, but the TWU said it would support efforts to save Rex. The National Secretary of that union, Michael K described Rex as, quote, another victim of an unregulated industry. So that obviously is referencing what happened to Bonza and more broadly kind of the market of domestic aviation. So when we think about some of the responses or the solutions to this problem, like what are those solutions? What is available to Rex in order to keep them afloat? Yeah, To answer that question, we can look to the response for other airlines that have been in trouble in Mm -hmm. recent years, and it could kind of go one of two ways. When an airline enters voluntary administration, an independent firm will be appointed to manage operations. So that could be, you know, a professional services firm, an accounting services firm, and it's basically their job to try and rescue the business. Mm -hmm. So whether that means selling it to another owner to take over operations or 
liquidating, dividing up the assets and, you know, finalising the the death of the yeah. airline, if you will. Mm-hmm. Virgin, Australia's second biggest carrier, faced an entire restructure after the airline collapsed at the start of the pandemic. Mm. So at the very first wobble, Virgin did collapse but was saved when administrators from Deloitte were tasked with rescuing it. They got it off the ground, sold it to a US investment firm, and that saved the airline essentially. Mm. So that is one kind of path that Rex could go down. Otherwise, there could be government intervention. And what would that look like? You might remember that in the wake of the early pandemic, the national carrier Qantas did actually receive this kind of funding, more than $2.7 billion in government assistance after it faced uncertainty during the pandemic. And it's famously faced a lot of criticism in the Mm. years since Qantas surrounding its market dominance, given the scale of that bailout as Mm. it was described. Anthony Albanese hasn't ruled out a bailout option for Rex, where the government would provide it with extra funding to keep it afloat. And I think what's really important to bear in mind here is the role that Rex plays as a regional carrier. We're not just talking about like an economic value here. It's also, of course, that it connects regional and rural populations with the rest of Australia. Exactly. And so I think that makes it a unique Mm. case and I would suggest that there will be some pretty heavy hitters in government arguing a case for saving it on those grounds. And Shadow Transport Minister Bridget McKenzie, in terms of where the opposition is on this one, she urged the government to, quote, not allow a repeat of Bonza. Um, The thing that I just can't quite get my head around... And I made a joke in the office the other day that the two industries you seemingly don't want to uh, own a business in in Australia are media and aviation. Obviously, I ignored my own rule for that first one, but it just seems like it's really difficult for anyone that is not Virgin or Qantas to survive in Australia. And I mean, even then, Virgin struggled as well. Yeah. What is the issue here? Why can't they survive? So there are a few key reasons for this. Firstly, the ACCC broadly attributes a lack of government policy to support these airlines to boost competition in domestic aviation. So overall, they kind of say that there is a blanket need for more regulation to help the little guys. And we're talking there about regulation, perhaps, that would allow for more competitive behaviour. If we're talking about the ACCC, they focus on competition. We know that there's this duopoly in Australia, so they're saying we need better protections for the smaller guys. Yeah, and one of those protections, or what it describes as one of the most effective ways that the government can promote better competition, would be to, quote, help new and existing airlines to better access takeoff and landing slots at Sydney Airport. Now, this- Talk me through this. This might sound boring, but it comes up time and time again as being really critical to driving competition Mm -hmm. or seeing unfair competition. This is about slot hoarding. Now, that's when major airlines book as many arrivals and departure spots at popular airports as possible Mm. to maintain priority runway access. So it's kind of about politicking between the airlines and the airports. But the problem with slot hoarding that the ACCC found and that has been responded to by the government with some reforms that we'll get to is that that removes the opportunity for new players to get runway space during Mm -hmm. peak times in busy places. So, you know, a new airline can't then schedule flights to in-demand places at in-demand times. Mm. And that there's also evidence that the ACCC detailed about the bigger airlines using these slots or booking these slots up and then cancelling flights. So hoarding them for preserving that priority access with no intention of running all of those services. So we have seen a little bit of reform here. In February, the government announced plans to improve how slots are managed at Sydney Airport in response to those calls from the ACCC. Now, this is Sydney Airport, the biggest, most busy airport. And the concerns around slot hoarding have been echoed within the aviation industry from experts themselves. So someone like Professor Ian Douglas, he's from the UNSW School of Aviation. He's argued that the practice of slot hoarding stops smaller airlines like Bonza and Rex from scheduling more flights and he told TDA earlier this year that the practice has resulted directly in less competition in domestic aviation and that that also drives up higher airfares for customers. As I mentioned, the ACCC has 
broadly called for more regulation in the industry. And some of that involves facilitating negotiations between airports and airlines. So what we kind of touched on there with the politics between airports Mm. and airlines, that an imbalance exists at the moment and that if the government regulated that space a little bit more, it would give smaller airlines and -and up-and-comers a bit of a leg up. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode of The Daily Oz. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you review it on whatever platform you're listening on. And if you're watching us on YouTube, hello and hit subscribe. We'll be back again tomorrow, but until then, have a great day.